Hello, my name is Christopher Ramirez Bedoja from the Technical University of Graz, and I would like today to present our paper, a web client based online DICOM browser under Converter for Studio Fenster, a web application to browse DICOM data and convert it into NERD file format. Um, to define first the requirements, uh, we need to take a look at the requirements in medical imaging. Medical imaging deals with the represent visual representation of the interior of the body, and depending on the context, um, it may have different requirements of the, for the data. We have, in example, the diagnostic setting in which verifiability of the data and relational information is very important. We also have the academic setting in which um, more importance may lie on the resolution of qualitative information of the data. Um, here in the image, we can see three different um, measurement methodologies. We have see radiography, MR, and, and nuclear uh, as a medicine picture. Um, the physical underlying values of this data may look completely different, and the structural form of the data would also be, may also be completely different. Medical imaging data needs also to be able to encompass all these different data types and data ranges, and need to be able to reproduce it uh, and store it in a uniform and correct way. So first, let's take a look at the features of imaging systems and what challenges they need to overcome. Mm. First, they need to obviously be able to represent our measurement information. So our physical measurement information, like Hounsfield units or absorption coefficients. Mm. Usually, or sometimes, they're also not direct. The physical values are represented, but some kind of direct data representation is used. So the direct image. That means some kind of pixel values, some intensity values that are directly stored into the data set. To interpret this and to know what we're looking at, we need some kind of meta information. Um, so we have um, the data the, the data format. So what do the bytes mean that I'm looking at? Um, what is the data compressed? Um, what kind of image format am I looking at? Is it a PNG or a JPEG um, or something else entirely? For also, we also need some kind of structural information. So the data order, um, the image dimensionality, all this information is called semantic information and it is at least as is the minimal amount of information that we need to reconstruct our data into a volume. Additional features in, uh, are, that are used mostly in clinical settings is some kind of contextual meta information. This information and we are only or mostly interested in only for verifiability purposes, maybe for some kind of environmental information, maybe we want some kind of information about the operator of the measurement, that means the person that actually made the measurement. Um, and maybe we want some information about the with the hardware that the measurement was taking, maybe some calibration data. Um, and then we have the relational information, which is how does this data set or this specific file then relate to another data set? Um, are they maybe part of a time series or are they maybe part, part of the same study? A popular format that solves this challenge is the DICOM format. Um, DICOM stands for Digital Imaging and Communications in Medicine and is publicized by the NEMA Foundation, a group of manufacturers that decided on a unified format uh, to ensure inter interoperability between their devices. Um, you can find the current things freely available at the web page. You can see it in the slides. Um, oh, but you can also find it as an ISO standard if you want to look at it like that. Um, the data standard itself is quite big. It has more than 10 parts. It has more than 1,000 pages. And it defines everything from data storage to how the data is exchanged, to how the data relational information is uh, and the structures are being stored, to how medical procedures need to be documented. In this paper, we're only interested in the relation information of the data and how to interpret it. In the DICOM format, uh, for us, the most important part is how DICOM defines its data structures and how it represents them. Uh, the DICOM not only defines the structural information, but also defines how entities interact with each other, um, also what kind of functions and what capabilities each entity has to have. Um, we're interested in to and how to identify and select data sets that belong together. For example, if we want to convert an image, then we need to see what image belongs to a volume, and we also need to, or we're interested in converting all the data uh, images from, from a data set. Um, so we need to see what data sets belong to that to a study, for example. Uh, on the right side, we can see this image that is defined in the DICOM standard itself, as this image is taken from there. Uh, we can see um, the main relationship that is used, that we are going to use throughout the whole paper is this patient study series relationship. A patient has one to n studies, study has one to n series. A series may be 
and then a um, completely different data type depending on what information is being stored. Our target file format is the NERD file format. NERD stands for Nearly Raw Raster Data and is um, just an n-dimensional raster data used for image processing. So there is no relational information or identifiable information of information of the patient of anything redundant like that. The NERD file format is um, published as part uh, of the team project. The team project publishes a um, family of related command line tools that ensure the interoperability with each other and have a lot of library with um, simple functionality for transformations or segmentation tools, etc. etc. Um, here is an example then of how really the data headers then look like. And on the left side we see the DICOM data header um, with the patient information, we have the information about the study, what kind of modality, so what kind of measurement type was taken, CT in this case. Um, we also see the unique identifiers that are used then to identify specific instances of a study or a series, etc. etc. As is how you relate them together. The file, and this is just a small part of the DICOM format, this is not the whole header. The header of the file format is really, really um, gigantic, and every position and the length of each position in the header is specifically defined in the DICOM format. The right side, we see the complete header of the NERD file format. Um, this is just enough information to rebuild the image volume when you have the 3D volume data. So we defined our project goals with these uh, specific requirements in mind. We wanted to display the DICOM data in an intuitive way. We wanted to keep this relational information defined in the DICOM standard um, and show it in a, to a layman in a way that doesn't uh, require knowledge of the DICOM standard itself and the internal representations so that they know how the data sets belong together um, for selection purposes. So we additionally wanted to display some of the semantic metadata just so you know what kind of information you're dealing with. And, and we also wanted a web client-based solution so that it's easier to deploy in um, to any web application and no infrastructure uh, and complicated deployment structures are necessary. Um, the tool itself needs then to convert the DICOM files into the NERD file formats and we also want to have an arbitrary level of selection. That means that you may select a study, you may also select a patient and it will convert then the whole folder uh, file format to then um, the correct image volumes. Uh, in this case we wanted to integrate the whole project into the studio fenster. The Studio Fenster project is a platform with several different image processing tools. It provides different, provides different converters as well as a 3D viewer and a VR viewer. Uh, it's active, being actively developed, so it has um, new exciting features every day. And it has, it's an open science platform and it's managed by the Cafe Lab. Cafe Lab is an interdisciplinary group formed between the TU Graz and the Medical University of Graz um, for this kind of research. We can see here a rough overview of how the project is structured. The Studio Friends project is, like I said before, uh, being actively de developed and as such it um, has um, fairly large changes that come in regular intervals. Um, to ensure that the changes in the Studio Fenster are, do not affect the DICOM and browser and these components, web component technology was used. Web component technology is um, a fairly new standard defined by, by the V3C, Mozilla, and ensures the encapsulation of components from the rest of the web application. Um, components defined in, with, uh, as web components are not defined in the usual place like the rest or like the usual ones are, they are defined in something called the Shadow DOM. Um, this makes it so that the components from the Shadow DOM and the normal place, the Light DOM is called, uh, cannot interact which is uh, which is other and can only influence each other in very standardized ways. The icon browser is here what we can see in the middle it's the part that actually integrates the project into the studio fencer it takes care of the presentation uh, in a uniform way and it also takes care of the presentation of the results so the nerd files that are then presented to the user. 
the bottom left side we can see the DICOM3 part. The DICOM3 is the part that takes care of the parsing of the DICOM information, then extracting of this DICOM data uh, relational structures and then presenting them as a tree for the DICOM browser. Mm. Then on the right side we have the AMI wrapper, which is just a wrapper class used to kind of um, take care of these external libraries that have some kind of different architectural um, needs. One of them is the AMI.js library, uh, which is uh, published by the IFNN DNCS, so the Fetal Neonatal Neuroimaging Developmental Science Center in Boston Children's Hospital. It's a li JavaScript library which their own uh, DICOM viewer, which offers um, not only viewing but also data manipulation. It offers the whole stack. So here first, just a quick look at the DICOM browser. Like I said before, the DICOM browser is this part that integrates it into the Studio Fenster. So we have here uh, this model, um, we, uh, this contained window in which our tree information is being presented. Um, and from the perspective of the project itself, the DICOM browser takes care of the deployment and the bundling of uh, and everything and streamlines all the, the building into one project. It also um, presents, like I said before, the, the results into the zip file when it's done. And it also shows the progress, how it's supposed to um, process um, when there are multiple files. Um, the DICOM tree part is the part that handles the DICOM file parsing and the DICOM file presentation. This is the content of this uh, contain window that we see this DICOM directory. So this is the part that actually takes care of reading the DICOM data file sets and grouping them together and um, handle, um, handling the input file selection and to see which data sets we're interested in. Uh, the DICOM tree itself is independently available in the NPM registry. So uh, this part can be uh, uh, um, implemented in any web application independently of the Studio Fenster. The AMI wrapper part, like I said before, is integrates the third party solutions into the project. The AMI.js and the NERD.js library have completely different requirements and they also um, don't work with web components. So they also have to be kind of moved off into these AMI wrapper functions. Um, the AMI.js library parses the DICOM uh, pixel information and uses its own internal model then to extract this pixel information and convert it into um, a volume. Um, in this AMI wrapper, we also take care of injecting this into an, also converting this the whole thing into a NERD um, array and also a N array structure. And we tried to create an, a file out of the serialization out of this to be returned to our main program. Here, in an example, on the left side, we can see the view of the user when the file is converted. We can see he's presented with a zip file containing all the images that were found in his user selection. Just below that, we can see um, a status bar in green right now, um, that detailing the status of the conversion on how far uh, in the process he is already. On the right side, we can see the Studio Fenster's own uh, viewer for nerd files. We can also here make a qualitative assessment and say that uh, um, have good impression that our data conversion worked perfectly. We can see from the same data set here a PT image just confirming how our tool is able to transfer different file formats from different modalities in the same data set and convert them together into the, our desired network files. In conclusion, what we have here is a tool to browse, select, and inspect DICOM folder structures. It is easily deployable, portable, and integratable into any and other web application. We also, as a web component technology, ensures that our application functions uh, independently from the container in which it is deployed. Uh, also, because the way we split our projects, the parts of it can be integrated into any other project if not the whole um, stack or the whole functionality is needed. An example, the DICOM3 part is available in the NPN registry and can be independently used from the rest of the project. 
to display we can also display here our dicom structures uh, in a tree view we can uh, this shows to answer the relationship between the data sets without a need of the understanding of the dicom standard a user will intuitively understand how, in a tree how the hierarchies of the data sets are um, structured we also allow a granular file selection. We can say we are only interested in example in a part of the slides, uh, slices, or we're only interested in some series and not all of them, um, or we're only interested in one patient and not another. Ideally, we have a single click solution. This means that um, we w the user can just upload his folder and if he wants all the files to be converted in the folder he just leaves it like it is he clicks on convert and the file will be converted and presented to him this is also an infrastructure independent solution there is no fancy server infrastructure needed this is a client-based server it depends wholly on the client-side hardware so here just um, short limitations about this Im specific implementation and outlook how to improve on it First, we could uh, tailor the view information to specific tasks. Right now, we're only displaying the most basic information necessary to identify the specific data sets. We could also add more powerful filtering functions. Uh, seeing how this is a visual identification of your data sets, um, you, um, some kind of extra functionality of filtering your data uh, could be very useful. We also would welcome a couple of uh, specific simple data manipulation and data edit possibilities. Daikon data can be in some small ways corrupt or incomplete and to implement some quick fixes could be desirable as far as they are relevant for your uh, this conversion or display. Um, right now really the biggest uh, missing feature is that RGB information is not being correctly converted right now. Uh, we only support uh, monochromatic intensity information and we would need to uh, spend some kind of extra development time just for the color information. Uh, we also have no non-UI functionality in the file conversion. That means that if someone wanted to do the file conversion with an HTTP query, that's not possible right now. They would also need some development time for it to be possible. Also, this all runs in the JavaScript environment of your browser, this program. So there are some memory size limitations. That means also that your image it itself can only have a maximal image size. For big data sets, it means that you will need to split them up into smaller data set um, uh, if you want to convert it. Just here a quick demonstration of how the th whole thing comes together. We just click on the Dragon browser function and we open our Daikon folder or, or folder container Daikon data. Afterwards the data is parsed into this patient uh, studies series structure given by the Daikon format. You can see how they are already logically grouped and, you, and how the uh, instances can be collapsed if you don't wish that much detail. You also can observe additionally the, the selectors if you want to select a specific series or a specific study for conversion. Here we can also see some basic information like the modality. This is a series with CT images, in example. We click on convert when we are ready and we can see the progress bar indicating the progress of our conversion. Afterwards, the files can be zipped and um, are presented to the user where he can save them and store them however he wants. We then open the Studio Fenster Medical 3D Viewer and we can open our nerd files and present them, see how they look like. Here we can see our nerd converted file. Just set the right thresholds. Then we can see the 3D image being presented.
So thank you for your attention and there's, if there's anything you want to know, then I'd be happy to answer.